This girls' club, which became known as the Sheridan Club, started in 1945. Pat Stacy, who was 12 years old at the time, made the logbook, where she and her friends wrote about what they did. The book is nearly 70 years old, so I have to be very careful about how I handle it. Pat Stacy has written, This club was first started in 1945, and as this logbook has only just been started in 1951, we can only put in a little about the past years. When we first started, we called ourselves the Avon League Club, and our meetings were held at Rosemary's. Other members were Eileen and Moore. Here, I will ask Rosemary to put in what she remembers of our first pantomime. The first scene was in the kitchen of the merchant's house, the second on the roadside, the third was the wedding day. I had written the script and we also put some songs into it. We acted a pantomime in our garden before an invited audience. It had rained during the day, making the afternoon performance impossible, but the evening was fine and warm. Before the show, we had all gone to friends' houses to show off our costumes. The evening was a great success, and everybody thoroughly enjoyed it. Rosemary Lockley And this is the original programme which was made by Eileen. Programme The Avon League Club presents Dick Whittington Dick Whittington Admission free Afternoon and evening performances Afternoon 3pm Evening 7.30pm Characters Dick Morford Price Alice Eileen Foster Puss John Price Cook Rosemary Lockley Merchant Patricia Stacy and the scenes in the kitchen of the merchant, on the roadside, the wedding. Later, this club fell through. I can't just remember why, but it did. I restarted it in 1946, over here at Sheridan. So we named it the Sheridan Club. We held it in the shed on Thursday evenings. Members were Eileen, Rosemary, Moore, Josie and later Anne. Amongst other things we had a piece of garden on which we grew vegetables and sold them to our friends. The club made two shillings and threepence which we put in our club funds. Here I must say that each member tries to bring a penny each week to put into the box for during the winter months we have torches in the shed so we have to have some money to pay for the batteries for them. Also, money for seeds, etc. After this club had been started, the younger ones wanted a club, so I began a junior club in 1947, which we held on Tuesday evenings, to which came Janet, Gillian and Wendy. Wendy was Pat's younger sister. In 1948, we decided we would join the clubs together for the concert. The play I wanted to do was The Woodcutter, but this couldn't be done as Margaret couldn't get to practices because of homework. This year, we had decided to try and make a little money on the concert, but as the admission was only two pence, we had to think of something else to make money. So we decided on having a sale of work. We all got busy and very soon had quite a nice collection of small articles. Here, I will hand over to Anne and let her write about the concert. This is the notice they made about the concert. The Sheridan Club are giving a concert and sale of work on the 13th of August 1948 to be held at 66 Sunfield Road, Arnold, afternoon at 3pm, evening at 6.30pm. Admission, two pence. The first joint club concert 
was held in 1948. The opening chorus was composed by Josie and it has been used in each concert since. The main point of the concert was the play which was written by Mr Stacy. It was called The Breakfast Fairies. Josie played a part of a very good natured mother and Janet and myself played a part of her two daughters, Wendy and Marie. Wendy played the part of Fairy Good Voice and Gillian was her rival, Nasty, the evil voice. Josie did two solo dances and with Gillian and Wendy danced the acrobatic dance called the Slave Dance. Janet said all the way, Pat sang the happy song and Janet sang the cradle song. Josie amused us by saying the Sultan and Sultana. Joyce read a little poem called Snowdrops and sang My Bed is Like a Little Boat. And this is a picture of the girls who took part in the club concert in 1948. Wendy as a fairy, eight years of age, and Josie as a dancer, 14 years of age. Pat writes, and here Josie will write in the chorus. Opening chorus. This is the club from Sheridan to greet you with a smile. We have to wear a smile these days to make your life worthwhile. We'll try to entertain you and please you too, you know. So we are the Sheridinas, hoping that you like our show. Closing chorus. The club is bidding goodbye to you all with a smile. We have to wear a smile these days to make your life worthwhile. We try to entertain you and please you too, you know. So we are the Sheridinas hoping that you liked our show. Josie Packwood This again was a great success and we made one pound ten shillings for Dr Bernardo Holmes. Here is the receipt. During this year, the junior club bred Peter Pan, which they all enjoyed very much. And we also had a silver paper collection and we were thanked in the Evening Post by Tinkerbell. Here is a cutting. Now here are the results for the year 1948. Senior club attendance Anne, 36 out of a possible 44. Points Anne with 261. Money, Josie who had brought in 4 and 11 pence during the year. Junior club attendance, Wendy, 42 out of 46. Points Janet with 331. Money, Wendy with 9 shillings and tuppence. These girls all received small prizes such as books, writing pads and diaries. The gardening results were Senior Club 7 shillings and tuppence, Junior Club 3 shillings and 7 pence. Again we went carol singing and this time we collected one pound and two shillings for Dr. Bernardo's home. The receipt is there. During this year, October the 6th, we went to the Bonington Cinema to see Bambi, which we all enjoyed very much. The club and members shared the cost of the outing. Pat received a letter from Dr. Bernardo's homes. Dear Miss Stacy, it is with warm appreciation I acknowledge the welcome gift of 15 shillings being the result of a carol singing effort made by you and your friends, also for the Christmas tree gift of seven shillings. I should be grateful if you would convey to your fellow carolers my warmest thanks. Were it possible for you to see the expressions of joy on the faces of our boys and girls on Christmas morning, they would indeed convey our gratitude to you more effectively than any written words of thanks. Our large family of more than 7,000 boys and girls Send greetings and best wishes to you all. Yours sincerely, Anna Aaron Jones. The concert in 1949 was the first one I had ever seen. And after seeing how everybody enjoyed themselves, I decided to join the Sheridan Club. The first item was a poem by Jean Sumpton called A Little Mistake. And then we had another poem by Janet Morris this was called the Raggle Taggle Gypsies. We then had a poem read by Pat, our captain, called
called The Cozy Cottage, which was composed by Anne, and also Captain read a poem composed by herself called A Spring Morning, which was both very nice. Anne then sang the second minuet, and then there were two more poems. Just before the concert, we had a new member who was enrolled after the concert, along with the second new member, Joy MacRobert and Jean Sumpton. At the end of the year, we lost Joyce Parkinson, as the family moved further away, and it was a long way for her to come, she being only eight years old. Our next excitement was the making of the guy, which Margaret and I did between us. It was very lifelike, and made some of the small children cry, as they thought he was a real man. On Guy Fawkes night, we had a marvellous time round the bonfire, singing, eating and letting off fireworks. This year, we sent two parcels to Tinkerbell. Here are the cuttings from the paper. As we had not sent our concert money to Dr. Bernardo's, we decided we would make Christmas stockings and tendies, which we did, along with some other things, including one and tenpence halfpenny worth of farthings. That works out to 90 farthings, because one shilling is 12 pence, plus 10 pence is 22 pence, at four farthings to a penny makes 88 farthings, and the halfpenny was worth two farthings, so a total of 90 farthings is dead easy, really. Here are the lists, etc., thanking us for our effort. And another letter from Dr. Bernardo's, thanking them for their gift. The results for 1949 are as follows. Attendance, Wendy with 28 out of 34. Money, Josie with 2 and 9 pence halfpenny. Points, Anne with 283, who beat Janet by one point. The garden result was 9 and 6 pence. The year was well finished off with a Christmas party at which Wendy, Josie and Anne received their prizes. We invited Mummy and Daddy, and Anne, being our club leader, gave Mummy and Daddy a lantern for the hall, to which we had all contributed. I was very pleased to receive a book, which the club presented to me at the party. I must add that each member had a small notebook given to them. Janet, I must add, was our club second. During this year, we chose Wendy as club librarian, as at the club's request, I started a library. I am proud to read this poem, because it was written by my sister, Anne Parkinson, 70 years ago. The Cosy Cottage The old and cosy cottage that stands upon the hill, the people there are well of age, and everything is still. The cottage has two rooms, which makes it very cosy, and every day they use a broom to keep it fresh and rosy. Outside it is so quiet. The garden smells so sweet. The old man's name is Tony, the woman's Marguerite. 